struggle and through every ups and down faith has become now I know what my God can do Lord have mercy I'm not wondering I'm not guessing I'm not hoping that maybe he'll come through he's come through for me too many times he's made a way too many times he's fought my battles too many times I know hallelujah This tent were dissolved. We've got a building not made with hands. We know that whatever we ask of him, he hears us. We know. Amen. We're not just muttering words when we pray. We know that the Father hears us. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we do know that when he appears, we know we shall be like him. Paul says, I know in whom I have believed. And he is able to keep that which I have entrusted to him over against that day. When your faith becomes knowledge, no one can dissuade you. Amen. We're not wishing, guessing, no. We, we know this God. So today we got another you know, perhaps the most popular you know of all here in the eighth chapter of the book of Romans, a verse that we all know quite well. For we know all things work together for good. For we know all things work together for good to them who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. All things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are the called according to his Tell your neighbor, everything is working for me. Tell your other neighbor, everything is working for me. Everything, everything, everything is working for me. It is said that what affects us most are not the things that happen to us, but how we handle, how we deal with the things that happen to us. And you know and I know that there are a whole lot of things with which we must deal each and every day. Usually multiple things. These things, these situations, these circumstances, these Difficulties, these troubles, these problems, these challenges, all of them, God works together for your good. You got to deal with some things, and so, amen, while you're dealing with some things, you need to know. You need to have an idea. You need to have a, high, a philosophy of how to handle the things with which you have to deal. Because it's not so much what happens to us, but it's knowing how to handle what happens to us. When I look out over the congregation, uh, um, 
Old Sandy Ray, that great Texan, pastored many years at the Cornerstone Church in Brooklyn. He used to say that the pastor is like the mother of a family. She goes to the grocery store and she's planning her meals for the week. And she knows her husband and she knows the children. She knows what each one likes and she knows what each one needs. And as she walks up and down the aisle, she grabs this for daddy and that for little Johnny and this for little Susan and that'll go good with Tuesday night's meal and this will go good with breakfast on Thursday morning he say the pastor is like that for as the pastor looks out over the congregation he sees uh, that people are dealing with a whole lot of things and so he prepares his message to deal with people and, and with the things, uh, hallelujah, uh, uh, with which you are dealing today. Oh, I look out, Sister Shalane, and I think about you, and I think about your mom, and what a difficult situation to now come to see, amen, the mother that raised you and nursed you, that now she's sick, and I know your heart goes out. you got to deal with some things. I look at you, Brother Garrett, and I know you just buried your sister of 90 years. You all have had sweet communion, supported each other, loved each other, even across the miles, talking on the phone. And it was so beautiful at the funeral because Deacon Garrett told about the last time he actually got to see his sister alive and how he went to the nursing home and spent the day with her. Amen. And it was so cute. He said, we talked a little together and then we slept a couple of times together. <laughs> but Brother Garrett, I know you're dealing with some Things. And not just Brother Garrett or Sister Shalane, but every one of us in here is dealing with some. Sister Priscilla, I see you here today. I see you with that young lady for whom we have been praying. in her battle and her struggle against cancer. And how many times, Sister Priscilla, have you told me, Rev, I won't be here this Sunday because this is my weekend to go see about my friend. Yes. Amen. You got to deal with some things, and she's dealing with some, some things. If you're not dealing with some things, you're just not alive. I mean, y'all look at Reverend Hall and y'all say he's up there preaching. He must not be dealing with some things. But you forget I'm pastor of Calvary Baptist Church. <laughs> Don't worry. It's a labor of love. It's a glorious burden. I wouldn't be anywhere else, but I just joking aside, joking aside, let me tell you something. When you hurt, I hurt. When you're going through bereavement, I'm going through bereavement. When you're in the hospital, I feel the pain. Paul says, here I am struggling and fighting, and yet there is upon me, he said, daily the concerns of all the churches. And it's a wonder that pastors don't do worse than we do. But thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He'll never call you where he can't keep you. Amen. He'll never call you where he won't strengthen you Amen. for the work that he has given to you. Yeah, Lord. I've had some funerals and folks say, Rev, I don't know how you got through that one. It was just the Lord. I cry like you cry. Yeah, Lord. We, we have to deal with things, with bad relationships. 
God live all. We know what you're going through. You're dealing with some things. How many of us in here, we, 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 we have now, we are caregivers for aging parents. Who have Alzheimer's and dementia. And they no longer even know us. And they are no longer the person we knew. Oh, oh, don't, don't, oh, no, don't fool yourself. It, it, it's hard dealing with these things. And if it were not for the things in our own personal life, in addition, we, we got some macro things. We got some big things. The racism in our society with which we have to live every day. Things. How do you deal with your things? Or oh, Sister Naya, the sexism in our society. My baby Naya says I'm the biggest sexist of all. <laughs> oh, just one of them? Well, I'm the sexist that loves you. But you got daughters, we have daughters. And we want the best for them, just like we want the best for our sons. Amen. Things. How do you handle your, your things? Well, I, I want to tell you three quick things quickly because this verse, this verse is about dealing with our things. I want to, I want to say three quick things and then we, we're going to give God our tithes and offering and we're going to go home. Now I tell you Calvary that when you say amen, I preach longer. <laughs> That's to teach you not to say amen before you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Firstly, what I love about this verse, number one, is that we see the experience involved in this promise. Yeah. For we know. Amen. We, not just Paul, every believer, we, no. we know. Yes, Lord. Yeah. This kind of knowledge is not intellectual knowledge. It is not the knowledge that comes from rote memory like knowing your ABCs and your one, two, threes. This is the knowledge that comes from experience. Yes, Lord. Well, you see, we've, we've been walking with God. We've been living with God. We've been going through and through every struggle and through every ups and down. Faith has become now. I know what my God can do. Lord have mercy. I'm not wondering. I'm not guessing. I'm not hoping that maybe he'll come through. He's come through for me too many times. He's made a way too many times. He's fought my battles too many times. I know. Hallelujah. What God can do. That's why I tell folk, if you ain't never been through nothing, then you don't know nothing. The songwriter said, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. It's in our experience of living with God and struggling with God and wrestling with God. And yes, yes, and God over and over keeping his promise, over and over showing up in our lives, over and over giving us grace that we don't deserve and over and over giving us mercy when we deserve punishment. This God, we know him. We know we're not hoping about God. We know God. I don't need to watch a documentary on the Discovery Channel to teach me about 
who Jesus is. I met Jesus a long time ago and he's been walking with me. He's been keeping me, Lord. He lives inside of me. We know it is knowledge born of experience. And let me tell you something. That's the greatest knowledge of all. You didn't read it in a book. It's interesting the way the Bible uses this word, no. It says, and Adam knew Eve. Oh, somebody give him praise and glory. You know, if Adam hadn't have known Eve, you and I wouldn't be here today. That, that's where it all got started. Adam knew Eve. And then, and then the book tells us that David knew Bathsheba. Lord, have mercy. You know, when I get to heaven, I want to see Jesus. I want to see the Father. Amen. I want to see the streets paved with gold. I want, I, want, I want to find my mansion. Lord have mercy. But, but when I get through with the essentials, two, two people I want to see. I want to, I want to see Delilah and I want to see Bathsheba. Oh, give him praise and glory. Ooh, do you know how fine Delilah must have been? She told, she told Samson what she was going to do, and he laid his head in her lap anyhow. Oh, that was showing sure up fine, boy. Whew. And, 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 and you know, here's King David. He has thousands of wives and concubines. But Bathsheba turned him out. I, I, I just want to see him. I just want to see him. You know, it's going to be perfect over there, so ain't going to be no lusting involved. This is just observation. Delilah and Bathsheba. And David knew Bathsheba. Now, when Adam knew Eve and David knew Bathsheba, you know something happened, right? Yeah, when, 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 when Adam knew Eve, Cain and Abel came out. When David knew Bathsheba, Solomon came out. In the narrative about Jesus, it says, and Joseph did not know Mary because Joseph wasn't his father. Oh, God, he was born of the father above. So Joseph, Joseph, it doesn't mean he didn't know who Mary was. What knowing means, it means an intimate personal experience. Adam knew Eve. David knew Bathsheba. Joseph did not know Mary. Our text is saying, you know God. You've had an intimate, personal experience with him. For we know. You've been coming to church long enough, praying long enough, reading your Bible long enough. You know what your God can do. You know who Jesus Christ is. Oh, God have mercy. It, it, it's a knowledge that is based upon experience. We know. God has a track record. Not what he did for the saints of old, for the patriarch. No, what he's doing for you right now. Oh, God. The greatest joy in life is knowing, knowing God. No. We're not hoping God's going to show up. We know. We're not hoping he's going to open a door. We know. We're not hoping he's going to fight our battles. We know. We're not hoping he'll make our enemies our footstool. We know. And if God never does anything else for you, he's done enough. I feel like preaching in this house today. I wish I, I wish I had two people who could say amen. amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not only 
the experience. This, this, this is not talking about a book knowledge. This is talking about something that you and God do together. And no, nobody can dissuade you. Nobody can take this away from you. When you're dealing with your things, you know. You know it by experience. But secondly, not only the experience of the promise, but secondly, we see the all-encompassing scope of the promise. We know all things. All things. All things. Alton, do you know what I'm talking about? You've been through the valley, but he brought you out. All things. You know we trust God with big things and we forget about God on the little things. But let me tell you, he didn't say for the big. He said all things, the big things and the little things. The public things and the private things. All things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The things, the things you tell your best friend about, Priscilla. But then there's some things that you wouldn't dare tell her or anybody else. Yeah, Lord. All, things. All things. Some things I did to myself. But he promised I, I, even your mistakes. Who is this God who can take our crooked and turn it straight? Who can take our wrong and make it right? Who can take our mistakes and turn it into blessings? All things. Things they do to us. The things we do to ourselves. Let me tell you something. The biggest enemy you have looks at you in the mirror every morning. But don't worry, God, God, God gonna work work that out too. Many things that we control, things we don't control, they just happen to us. Everything. I look out at you, Sister Genovia. I know you're dealing with some things. Your mother, whom you love so much, you brought her up from Alabama just so she could be here so that you could dotingly take care of her. Yeah. And while you take care of her, you and Della, you got your own struggles with it, your own personal struggles. Yeah. He says all things. All things. Mama, all things. All things. Sickness, all things. All things. All things. The things we like and the things we don't like. All things. The, the happy things, the joyful things, the painful things, the, 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 the sad things, all things. Amen. He, he's at work, working it for your good. Oh, somebody ought to give him praise and glory right now. Somebody ought to thank him right now. You see, it's not that you always see what he's doing, but you know he's doing it. Lord have mercy. Sometimes you, while you're in it, you don't see it. But when you get down the road and look back, Alton, then you look back and you see that all along his hand was right there weaving, Lord have mercy, and knitting together everything to turn it out for your good. All things. Everything yeah, work together for good. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> yeah, Lord. Now I want to say to you today yes, Lord. that people take this verse to mean something it doesn't say. They run around and flip on the list. All things. Really. Let me tell you what it does not say so you won't be confused. For we know all things work together the way we like. 
No. See, you think God said it's going to work out for your good. It's going to be what you like. But it ain't got nothing to do with what you like. It has to do with what God says is good for your life. You struggling and you wondering why, Lord, have mercy. He hasn't delivered you from that situation. But what may be good for you is that you stay right there. And you're not necessarily going to like it. Jesus didn't like anything about Calvary. But it was for our good. All things work together the way I want. No. I'm not telling you it's going to work out the way you want it to work out. Nine times out of ten, it don't work like that. God doesn't work like that. He's not about what you like, and he's not about what you want. He's about what's good for you and what's best for you. He's working it out for your good. We talked this morning, and I told him, you know us old heads, the way the old folk raised us. You know, once or twice a year, grandmama would make you drink the castor oil. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Don't act like you always lived in New York with perfect health care. And that castor oil was some nasty stuff. (laughs) Oh, but grandmama knew that after you had your castor oil, the devil couldn't do you no harm. (laughs) We didn't want it. We didn't like it. God doesn't promise it's what you want. He doesn't promise it's what you like. But he promises, Lord, that he will work it out for your good. Jacob was there. They told him, look, Joseph is dead. And now they want the baby boy, Benjamin. And Reuben is gone. And your family is obliterated. Jacob said, I want to die. Because all these things are against me. And see, this is why sometimes I say you got to know it even when you can't see it. My pastor used to put it like this. He used to say you got to trust God even when you can't trace God. You don't feel him there, but you better know he's there. Lord, have mercy. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, yeah. You don't see how he's going to do what he does. But trust me, he's already working on your behalf. Everything Jacob thought was against him was actually... Working for him. Yes, Lord. Well, Joseph, who he thought was dead, was second in command in Egypt, and it was his position in Egypt that not only saved Jacob and saved Jacob's family, not only saved the very brothers who hated him so much that they sold him into slavery, yes, Lord. but it saved the plan and purpose of God who had promised to make of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're part of God's purpose. He's not going to let you down. He's not, he's not going to let you go down like that. Tell your neighbor, everything is working for me. Well, I know it doesn't look like it. But you got to know that God is already there. Even when you don't feel it, even when you don't think you deserve it, even when you can't see it, you've got to know God is there. Amen. All things. He just keeps working it out. Yeah, Lord. For your good. Or, you know, we didn't want the castor oil and we didn't like the castor oil. But we didn't complain about the benefits. Some of you young mamas, 
around here giving these children all this medicine. We the most medicated society in the history of the world. Baby, go to the drugstore, get you a bottle of castor oil. <laughs> Clean his little butt out. This promise is about our experience. We know, we know. We didn't read it in a book. We know. And, and it's all encompassing. E everything you're going through, God's already working for you. You got to know that Amen. and never doubt it. Yes. Oh, and you know the be beautiful part of the journey is when you get down the road, Sister Lois, and you look back and you say, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> God was in this place and I didn't know it. Hmm. We know based on our experience, our, our intimate relationship with him, we know. And, and it's all encompassing. There, there's nothing that he doesn't work out yeah, Lord. for your good. But thirdly and finally, what I like most about this promise is the exclusivity of the promise. It's only for certain people. It is for members only. Not members of a local church, members of the family of God, members of the kingdom of God, members of the body of Christ. This is a promise. And I see a whole lot of folk that don't know Jesus running around talking about all things. No, no, no. He ain't promised you nothing. You need to say no thing. This is exclusively for those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. You're here because God called you. You didn't call God. God called you. You didn't know God. God knew you. You didn't choose God. God chose you. God doesn't open your eyes to see who Jesus Christ is. Guess what? The preacher can preach till he's blue in the face. The praise team can praise and worship. A whole, but unless God touches you so that you can see that Jesus Christ is more than just a miracle worker and more than a preacher of great power, but he is nothing less than, the, you know, God, God opens the eyes of your soul. That, that's where he, you can't see him until he opens your eyes that you might see. You've been called by God and you're asking yourself, Lord, why did you, why did you take me out of darkness and bring me into the marvelous light of the knowledge? Of, guess what? Because God can choose whomever he wishes. Amen. You think it's because you were so good. No, you're just a garden variety sinner. Like every other sinner on the face of the earth. But he is a sovereign God and he has a right to choose whoever he wants to choose. You've been called by God. This promise is for you. Now, there are inclusive promises. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Whosoever. Amen. Any person on the face of the earth can claim that promise. It's a promise for anybody. It's a promise for everybody. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But to as many as did receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. Anybody can claim that promise. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anybody, whoever. Regardless of your past, regardless of your mistake, you might be a criminal. You might be the Golden State Killer. But if you come to Jesus Christ in repentance, he will save you. Amen. You might be Adolf Hitler. But if you come to him, he says, anyone who calls on me, I will in no wise cast you out. Amen. 
that, 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 that those are his inclusive. Those are include anybody can claim those promises, but there are certain promises in the book that, that, that is only for, amen, the children of God. They are only for the people of God. They are only for the saints. They are only for the members of the body of Christ. And this is one of those, this is one of those promises. And you know what? It was the inclusive promise that got you into the kingdom. It was the inclusive promise that got you into the family of God. But it's these exclusive promises the promises that God makes only to his children these are the promises Lord have mercy that'll get you from earth to glory these are the promises that you can hang your hat on these are the promises that work every time and they're only for God's people he promises that you are the head and you are not the tail that's what he promised. He promised, Lord have mercy, that the enemy will come at you in one direction, but flee in ten directions. That's what he promised to those of us who love him. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver her out of every one of them. I know you're on your way back to the hospital, but he brought you out the last time. He'll bring you out this time. I know you got to fight some battles, but he fought your battle the last time. He'll fight your battle this time. I thank God for the exclusive promises. Sometimes my little money is low uh, and it ain't in my bank account uh, but I thank God for his promise. Uh, my God shall supply your needs uh, according to his riches and glory. I know that whatever I need, uh, he will provide. I thank God for his promise. Uh, sometimes you don't feel like he's right there with you uh, but guess what he promised uh, and lo I will be with you uh, always even to the end of the world he'll never leave you he'll never forsake you he'll never walk out on you thank God for his exclusive promise I thank God for his promise that he who began a good work in me will carry that work on to the day of completion thank God for his promise I ain't what I used to be I'm not what I supposed to be but he's working on me right now. Please be patient with me. God ain't through with me yet. But when my God gets through with me, I shall come forth. I shall come forth. I shall come forth. Yes. Like pure gold. I've got some promises. Lord have mercy. I've got some promises. When I'm burdened down. He say, just don't, don't worry about it, Vic. Cast your cares on me. I care about you. Tell your neighbor he cares about me. Tell your neighbor he cares about me. Tell your neighbor everything is for me. He's working it out for my good. Yes, ain't he all right? I bless his holy name. I thank him right now. He's working it out. Yes. Hallelujah, yes. Yes. Great God from Zion. He's working it out. bless his name you got to know what you know you around here falling apart no you know this God is going to take every little thing every big thing and he's going to bring it out to your good come on somebody give him some praise up in this house ain't he an awesome God 
Ain't he a wonderful God? Oh, bless his name. I love him. I bless him. I thank him. Yes, he's all right. Yes, he's all right. Yes. Hallelujah, yes. Yes. Thank you. You ain't got to worry about what Negroes do to you. You don't have to lift a finger. You don't have to say a negative word. Just take it to your father. You know. You know. He's going to work it out. We get bent all out of shape about little petty stuff that don't matter. God will work it out. 